Welcome problem solving fans to another problem of the day and this one is all about number lines and scales and finding halfway between two numbers shown on a number line. Well before we look at the actual number lines let's talk about how to find halfway between two numbers. So for example if you've got the numbers 2 and 3 that might be pretty obvious that halfway between them is 2.5. But as the gap between the numbers comes larger, then it's a bit harder to find the difference between them. So, for example, the gap between 10 and 26, that's a bit harder to see. Now, one thing you can do to find the gap between 10 and 26 is add them together, which would be 36, and then half it. Well, half of 36 is 18. So, halfway between 10 and 26 is 18. And if you think about it, 18 is 8 more than 10, and it is 8 less than 26, so it makes sense that it is in the middle. It also works, this little trick, when there is a much, much bigger gap between the numbers. So, for example, if you had a number of 17 and 152, then what you would end up with would be, adding them together, you would get 169, and so we would have to half 169. Well, a half of 100 would be 50. A half of 60 would be 30. And a half of 9 would be 4.5. So if you put those together, 50 plus 30 is 80. Plus 4.5 would be 84.5. So halfway between them would be 84.5. Now we're going to use the same idea with the fractions on the number lines. So, one tenth plus nine tenths is ten tenths. Now if you half that, half of ten tenths is going to be five tenths. So, ten tenths divided by two is five tenths. So that means halfway between one tenth and nine tenths would be five tenths. Now if you think about it, that does make sense because the gap from one tenth up to five tenths is a gap of four tenths, and the gap from five tenths up to nine tenths is also a gap of four tenths. So it makes sense that five tenths is in between. Now the second one is slightly harder, because we now have a mixed number. So what we might like to do is convert this one and three tenths into an improper fraction. So one whole one, so we're obviously dealing with tenths, well, one whole one is ten tenths, so we've got a whole one with ten tenths, and we've got to plus an extra three on top there, which will make thirteen tenths. Now, if we add those together, we've got one tenth add thirteen tenths is fourteen tenths, and obviously half of fourteen tenths, it's like saying half of fourteen apples would be seven apples half of 14 oranges would be seven oranges half of 14 fire engines would be seven fire engines so this is like the unit that we're talking about so we're dealing with tenths so half of 14 tenths would be seven tenths so seven tenths must be in the middle now let's just think about the gap well the gap from one tenth up to seven tenths you'd have to go up an extra six tenths and then from 7 tenths, go up another 6 tenths again, that would give you 13 tenths. 7 plus 6 is 13. And 13 tenths is a whole 1 and 3 extra tenths, so that seems to make sense. For the final question, this time we've got different denominators as well. Now obviously, 2 and a half, if we're dealing with tenths, we might as well stick with tenths. 2 and a half is 2 and 5 tenths. But if we convert that into an improper fraction, if one whole one has 10 tenths, two whole ones has 20 tenths, 2 times 10 is 20, plus the extra 5 is 25 tenths. So basically, this 2 and a half is the same as 25 tenths. Now let's add those two together. So use the rule that we talked about earlier. 1 tenth add 25 tenths. So 1 tenth add 25 tenths is 26 tenths. Half of that, half of 26 would be 13 tenths. When you divide it by 2, 
you're going to get 13 tenths. Let's just rub that out because that's in the way. So that's 13 tenths. So right in the middle there is going to be 13 tenths.